I, I thought it was a great achievement doing the play on Broadway, Mornings at Seven and being nominated for a Tony Award. I thought that was a great achievement. It was difficult to do. It required a lot of sacrifice from Anne and our family. It was difficult and we achieved it and it was successful. I think my second marriage, we were never not married, but our second wedding, yeah, we, we renew vow renewal. We like had we vow did. renewal uh, on twentieth, uh, pretty much our twentieth wedding anniversary. We we got married again, and it was an enormous achievement because we'd both been through a lot of difficult times, and we felt more connected than ever, having survived those difficult times. Um, and I feel little achievements every time I finish a story that I like. More so than acting, uh, except for the Broadway show. More so than like doing a TV series or something like that. When I write a story that I feel is important to me and means something, I consider each one of those an achievement. I'll shut up, now you. I think I have an answer, a clear answer. For wow. As I'm sitting there thinking, I would think my greatest achievement is that uh, my whole life I thought that I was a crazy girl. Um, I was a difficult child. Uh, I think it was called hyperactive back in the day when I was, but I was very challenging for my parents. Through a lot of temper tantrums, you know, a lot of self-loathing, I'm a bad person, I'm a bad kid. And so I always grew up with this expectation that there was something wrong with me. And at one point a few years ago, in the midst of one of those mini crises, I asked myself, what would the world look like if I'm not crazy? And the answer was exactly the same. Hang on. So, as in, you didn't think of yourself as crazy? Or as in you... I always thought of myself that there was something wrong with me. Right. You know, that, I, but, that I was a bad kid, I threw temper tantrums, I was difficult for my parents. But you decided, what if this is just, What if I'm wrong and I'm is, not crazy? What if this is just who I am? No, not exactly. What if my label of me being crazy was incorrect? Got it. And that, just a what if, not saying I wasn't, but just as a what if, what would, what would be different in the world? in my world if I weren't crazy and I felt that it would be exactly the same so I decided that I could choose to not see myself as a crazy person and I use the word crazy um, uh, uh, somewhat exaggeratedly but I mean you know that a, a damaged person a difficult person to get along with a person with who has bad temper uh, gets angry a lot, uh, gets depressed a lot, is very moody. That you know, what if what if I'm wrong in the way I see myself? And I decided I didn't have to be that way. And and the world changed for me, and that I developed more of a sense of humor about things. Things didn't bother me as much. I I feel that it was the whole world changed when I changed my attitude about myself just by accepting the possibility that I had been wrong in the way I looked at myself my whole life. And I think I've been a lot less of a crazy person. Yeah, and, and, and it's I'm much been, easier to get along with. My kids are a lot happier than I'm not like mom yelling, why did you do this? Why did you make this mess? We have a lot of instances now where one of the rules Anne instituted in the house was we can leave at any time. Permission yeah. to change our minds. Permission to change our minds. We don't have to be committed to anything. If we have to go to a movie or a player's, permission to leave. Permission to not to not attach. We could bail. If at the last minute you don't want to go to the party, we have permission to call them up and say, sorry, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. We have a, something going on here. We won't be there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and with that came a lot less stress over things and we didn't bail on things but knowing that we could leave at any time it, it made things a lot less stressful and uh, you know in the meantime I've had a couple terrible health 
issues. You know, I had a broken neck, I had open heart surgery, and all this. And Anne is, you know, kind of comes to the point of like, well, it's not as bad as that. You know, with, with so many things she has, like, well, this is no big deal. We can handle this. This is nothing. And as opposed to focusing on the problem, focus on diminishing the problem. And go like, this is not yeah. such a big deal. I think my problem was I was always kind of a perfectionist. You know, I thought things had to go a certain way and be a certain way in order for it to be acceptable. And when I no longer felt that I needed to do that, that's when a lot more things started going right. And yes. since you don't have a daughter, um, what would you say to a woman my age? What one thing, what advice would you give to a woman my age? It's never too late to find what you're looking for, you know, for your dream to happen. That the timeline that you give yourself is artificial. That love, achievement, um, fulfillment, happiness can come. I mean, I, I found, as I was saying earlier, sort of peace with myself at 57 or something like that. That's something I've been looking for my whole life. So I certainly found love older than, than a woman your age is now and at a time when I thought those things would never happen. So I, I, I think it's just keep looking. Particularly for women, there's, there's the biology of it is still present. There's the societal influence, which is, gives conflicting messages. But I, the solution that I would offer is to just keep doing what you want to do and realize that sometimes the answers and the, the rewards come from unexpected sources and unexpected ways and not necessarily on the timeline you would want.